Hello, my name is Arthur, and in this video, we're going to um, get to a point where we can open a file. Now, I've made some changes to the file that I figure it would just speed things along if we didn't type out every little change on um, video. So, we're going to go through the file to see what we've done here. I've moved name from address up to the top here and I don't know if it needs to be here I just moved it up here for now in the last video we put in um, the dialogue to confirm a close file so if we've clicked on a file that's been modified it pops up the dialogue and gives us the choice to discard the file or to save and close and I mentioned that that the save as dialog might not work for for a save and close scenario and um, it turns out there's a way that I could go about that to make the save as dialog function for both so what I've done is I've made a new type an enum with the two options save and close and save and continue and that type is going to be passed to the save as dialog and in the event that we end up with the save and close for its type it's just going to do the remove the page things so it does the remove and page things that it's the exact same script that is inside of the close file or close tab function so it's this exact same thing it's just organized differently because some of the things were up here so now it can either save and close or save and continue depending on who's calling on the save as function so let's see um I've made a change here to set the to set the notebook um, to the current page that's being deleted. So when a page is deleted, it becomes the current page, and there's actually a need to set that differently. And um, we'll have a look at why that is. So we'll just run that. So when we delete a tab, um, I want it to be the current tab for other reasons, um, just to make sure that we're deleting the right tab all the time. So that was actually already in place. So the behavior that I want to get now is when there's multiple tabs we're in the front tab and we delete a back tab we're ending up at the tab that we weren't in so what we'd want it to do is to act more like this software would so if we're in this tab and we start deleting background tabs we don't actually change visually what tab we're in so we're going to get it to act like that So let's see, that would be, we'll just borrow this right here because this is very similar to what we're going to call here. So we're going to go int current page equals and we'll paste that in there and we'll get the current page instead. So we'll get current page. Before we set the current page, we're going to get the current page. So that would be the page that we're looking at. Like this would be the current page. Then as a last thing in here, we're going to set the current page. So well, actually that will already be in the clipboard. So we'll set current page, but we'll set it back to current page. So 
So if we do that, we're kind of, we'll be controlling. No, I have too many terminals open now. We should be controlling um, which tab, our foreground tab, a little bit better. So now if we're in the foreground tab and we delete one of the background tabs, we'll stay in the foreground tab. So hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, I'm not sure I remember the exact reason why I wanted to set the current page um, or if that was a, actually a change. So, case one is when the pop-up dialog appears and we choose between close or save and close. Um, we now are passing in the enumerated value for save and close. In add tab, I've changed the values that are passed to it to name and address. So it's no longer calling on on name from address to sort out the name. Then I've um, set it so that when we add a tab, that tab becomes the current tab. So this is the change to facilitate the, the two values passed into add tab. So now I'm passing in unsaved document when I create a tab and for the address just an empty string. Same thing when the notebook is made it's passing in that empty string and unsaved document is the name. So the name unsaved document would change at the point that we get to actually saving and writing a file but we're not quite there yet. So at the save as, so when we use the save as button, that's a save and continue scenario. So the type is, we send the enumerated value for save and continue. And it only actually does something when we, when we, um, when we pass in save and close, but this way is just more clear. It's more clear than passing it a zero and a one, like we can see what we're passing and why. <clears throat> and yeah that's the end of the changes so hopefully those are all making sense um they're not really very large changes they're just things to that i figure will make things work a little bit better and i've been looking ahead a little bit and i figure that um back when we made the structure for for the book um, I mentioned that the boolean that may or may not need to be used and so far it's kind of looking like it won't need to be used because if we're to click the save button and there's no um, there's no file address and this is probably going to need to change a little bit here Uh, yeah, we'll probably be passing the page number is what I imagine that's going to end up looking like rather than the address. Or maybe a combination of the two. <clears throat> because um, when we click save if we're passing in an address in that fashion then that's probably not the way to go about it so that still needs some sorting out um, actually it doesn't it will get past the page number it will get past the page number and um, 
if the page number doesn't have an, a file address, if it doesn't have an address, it will get diverted to the Save As dialog. So Save As will need to be declared above the save file, which is what kind of what I figured would end up having to happen. So what we want to do now is we want to get open file working and yeah, it was a little bit difficult to figure out how to do this. I find the documentation in certain areas of GDK pretty difficult to sort through. So it took a little bit of um, sorting around to figure that out. So what we're going to do first is we're going to declare a G file. So we'll call it file. we'll give it a value and basically what I think this is doing is really just opening the file so this is more or less it breaks down to kind of like being like F open so we're gonna make it equal G file new for path And we'll be able to just pass in address. And that'll get us to where we're going. So we'll need a char. And we'll call it file buffer. So file buff. That'll be good. And then we'll put in a G boolean. And, yeah, the G boolean is just going to slim down on the line length, really. So we'll just call it check. So we're checking to see that the file opened. Then check will equal G file get contents. G file get contents we use the address and file buff then null and I think that has to do with the length and null. So it will read up to uh, to uh, end a file like this. And the second null has to do with error checking and I'm not that big on error checking. We'll react to if the file open doesn't save and we'll check that it's the right kind of file. So we're going to go if check. So we're checking if the file opened. And G UTF 8. UTF 8 validate. We want to validate that the type of file is the UTF 8. So we pass in the file buff, and I think that null is a gain. I think that's length. I'm not really tremendously positive on that. And yeah, some of this, it's going to come down to wading through that documentation because um, this stuff is not easy to find in tutorial form especially in C. So now we'll add a tab because the file has opened and it is a UTF-8 file. What that means is it'll be able to open plain text and it will open um, a binary but it will just display gibberish. At least to me it's gibberish. 
Uh, apparently there's a robot nurse that might be able to understand it. So we'll go name from address at this point. And that's the function that we moved up top. It's just going to get the file name from the address by finding the last slash in the string. I'll pass it address. And then address is the second thing that add tab is looking for because it's looking for two jars. So we'll get that. We'll get us a page number. And that's GDK notebook. GDK notebook. Um, get current page. So with the current page, we can set the text into the buffer. GDK text buffer. Set text. Set text. Um, so we'll be referencing the book at page num. page num dot buff so we want to pass in the buffer and then file buff and then minus one and the minus one is again that's a length reference so I think that minus one makes it look for an end of file Then we want to set modified. So let's just take up to this part in here. We don't need to type all this out again. Unless it has a typo. So this time we'd set modified. buffer set modified comma false because we just modified the text buffer so we want to set it to false because we haven't edited the file then comes the file didn't load so the file didn't load would end up being um, a dialog but we don't have a dialog made for that so it will gprint open failed and we'll return actually I don't think that will return I don't think that's the thing to do there at all so what would happen here is call to a warning dialogue then the last things to do is we should free the memory so we'll free file buff and dereference the object so g object unreference and that's just to unreference file the g file 
So let's scan across that. Look for typos in notebooks since that's my most popular typo. Missing a semicolon. So that looks okay. So I probably just opened another superfluous terminal. I just get used to doing that. Oh man. Not this again. Open file. Passing argument to makes integer from pointer without a cast. Um, what did I type there? I have two nulls and this isn't supposed to be a null. This is supposed to be a minus one for length. That's the problem. Oh, we don't want to do that again. So I'll just try again and see if that clears that one. Makes pointer without a cast. G file get contents. Oh, this one was supposed to be null. I'm fixing the wrong one. And this one is supposed to have a length. should be right like that. Let's get this back. Hopefully that gets us together. Error address typo. And where's that one? There it is. Pretty good at those typos anyways. So that should get us there. So we can add tabs still. We can close tabs still. If we type in a tab, it will still give us a pop-up. We'll close and discard. And let's get to the meat and potatoes here. Let's open a file file opens it has the name main.c which is what we just opened and there's no warnings or anything that occurred from that so let's close that up it closes because it hasn't been modified let's open up the binary see what happens we just get some gibberish no file extension Let's try to open up something silly like a PNG file. Doesn't open. Open failed is printed, so we would have got our pop up dialog. Could not open that file. Um, what else would there be? We'll open it from here to make sure it's working on all the buttons. Open main C. Let's get a cursor in there and hit the space bar. Try to close it. Document's been modified, so it's going to query us. 
So that seems to have us working. We're limited to just the plain text file of um, UTF-8, but that's kind of what I'm aiming for. I'm not like I'm going to be aiming for a rich text <laughs> file editor in my first kick at the can. So that's got that working. Um, hopefully the explanation for the little changes that I've made are clear. They're, um, well, I've pointed them all out and I guess like if a person's not really following along um, about the most they might get out of this video is this function to open a file and I guess that technically it probably should have some error reporting in place but honestly I don't really see a lot of purpose there on that um, I would be looking for things that I don't really see a need for it um, and I don't know a lot about error checking so that's an area that I do need to learn more in so again I'm gonna point out um, I'm not an expert in C or GDK I've only been using um, these two languages for uh, less than a month and a half so this is what I've come up with and hopefully it's useful to somebody and until the next video take care.